Okay, so what we're going to look at now is antiderivatives of some trig functions. Now, you always want to think, remember, an antiderivative, an antiderivative, all it is is the inverse operation. So I'm looking for, like this one here, I'm looking for what function's derivative is cosine, and that's what this is saying. What function's derivative is cosine. And of course, we know that is sine of x. So this is just becomes sine of x plus your constant. So what function's derivative then is sine? Well, cosine's derivative is negative sine. So I go backwards, this becomes negative cosine of x plus c1. What function has a derivative of secant squared? Well, that's our tangent of x plus c1. Cosecant becomes negative cotangent of x plus c1. Secant tangent becomes just secant of x plus c1. And here we get negative cosecant of x plus c1. Now the one thing I want to you to look at here, okay? The one thing I want you to look at here is they're just inverses of each other. The derivative of sine, cosine. The derivative of cos negative cosine, positive sine. They're just inverses. The other thing is we don't know the antiderivative of secant and cosecant right now. We'll talk about that later on. But for right now, these are pretty easy. So if I want to take a look at an antiderivative of, let's say this, 12 secant x tangent of x dx. Well, the 12 is a constant. I don't worry about that. So I get 12, and I'm looking at only the secant tangent. Well, what's the antiderivative of secant tangent? If I look at my list, it's secant. But I really don't memorize it. I know, I just ask what function is derivative of secant tangent, and I get secant of x plus c1. And there's my answer right there. Number two, let's say I have something like this. 2 cosine of x minus 3 sine of x dx. And should put that in parentheses, I guess. Same idea. I'll go down here below. This becomes just a 2. What function's derivative is cosine? Well, we know that's the sine of x. Minus, what function's derivative is sine? That's negative cosine. Makes that a plus cosine of x plus c1. And there's our derivative. I mean, our antiderivative right there. Very easy to do. Even if I get something a little bit harder, like this one. Cosecant of x times cotangent of x minus cosecant of x dx. Now, remember there's no product rule, so I have to distribute. And that gives me cosecant of x, cotangent of x, minus cosecant of squared of x, dx. What function is antiderivative cosecant cotangent? That's our negative cosecant of x. What function is derivative negative cosecant? That's our, and look up here, negative cotangent, so it becomes positive cotangent of x plus c1. And there we go. Now the last one, let's take a look here for a trig one, number four. Ready? What if I have something like 1 plus the secant squared of x dx? Oh no, let me turn on my light here real quick. There we go. And I probably have to refocus this too. So let's see here. Now, for a problem like this, very easy. Oh, that's not too bad to do. Secant squared, what does that become? This becomes just x plus, what is that? Tangent squared of x. Whoops, plus, whoops, just tangent of x, sorry about that, plus c1. So, very easy to do. Okay, very easy to do. But let's take a look at number five right here. What if I have something like this? The cotangent squared of x dx. I don't know that. That's not on my list. But here's a hint for you. Pythagorean. I don't know cotangent squared, so I'm going to write this out. But I, anytime I see a trig function that's squared and I don't automatically know it, I write this out. Cosine squared equals 1. My Pythagorean identity. I want cotangent. Well, cotangent is cosine over sine. So I divide everything by sine squared of x. Sine squared of x. Sine squared of x. And that gives me 1 plus the cotangent.
tangent squared of x equals cosecant squared of x and allows me to replace this. I can replace cotangent with one, sorry, cosecant squared of x minus one dx. I can just replace it. And I know this is its antiderivative negative cotangent of x minus x plus c1. And there's my antiderivative. All right, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a look here how to solve for c1. Now, c1 is a constant. Okay, very important. So, what we're going to take a look at next is how do we solve for c1? Finding, solving for the constant. Let's say we have a function, its derivative dy dx is 8x cubed plus 3x squared. And I know its initial condition. Its initial condition such that the value at 0 is 1. Now notice, this is dealing with the value, the function itself, but I only know its derivative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the antiderivative. To find y, remember this is my derivative, right? To find y, I take the antiderivative of this function. Now don't forget the dx. Remember where does that dx come from? I'm multiplying it across. The dy, I know that's going to become just y. We'll talk more about that later on this year. When I take the antiderivative, just like we have been doing, we get 2x to the fourth plus x cubed plus some constant. Now, this is my antiderivative. It has a special name for it. We call this a definite, sorry, not definite, excuse me, an n definite integral. Now what that means is, I don't know what c is. It's indefinite. Now integral is this a term we use for antiderivatives. They're synonymous with each other, so we, we'll use them back and forth. But because I know an initial condition, I can solve for c. So to find my value c1, I'm going to use the point they gave me, 0, 1. I just plug it in. 1 equals, this just becomes 0 plus 0 plus c1. So therefore, c1 is 1. And now I got my function, y equals 2x to the fourth plus x cubed plus 1. And there's my function. And that's how we solve these. By the way, this plus c meant it's not unique. An indefinite integral is what we call not unique. Because c could be anything. It doesn't make it unique. By giving it a point, 0, 1, then it becomes unique. Once you give it like an initial condition, now it's unique because you're giving it value. Okay? All right, so try these. If you have any questions, please feel free to come on in. Okay? Bye-bye.